Welcome back to Dragon Quest Builders 2! We've made our way to Renderok in hopes of finding the Orb of Heroes. And within it, we've found not the horrible, treached land that we were expecting, but a green paradise. And at the center of it, Middenhall Castle. A place that shouldn't even exist here. But as representatives of Moonbrook, we need to retrieve that orb, regardless of what foul magics are going on here. Look at them dancing, ladies. Questions. So without the knowledge of what happened in Dragon Quest 2 about this area, I was thinking that this was a complete... That, that this was a proper kingdom that had been walled off and nobody knew anything about anymore. But it fell to the praise of Hargon and... I was guessing it was these bunny girls that were like demons or succubi or something. Who'd corrupted the king, which in turn corrupted everything. It's welcome home, but everyone is referring to us as though we were the Prince of Middenhall. My, my assumption, my first playthrough, since I didn't have that framework, was that this was our king, Moonbrook King, or at least an illusion of Moonbrook King. Trying to let us know that no, you don't gotta worry about that Hargon guy. Like, come just stay here. We can do the thing that we've always been doing. <laughs> because this kind of makes complete sense in the frame of reference of Dragon Quest 2, as well as the frame of reference of this being. Moonbrook's king in Builders 2. Talking to us about our quest. And then the record scratched. end of the day, all just part of the illusion. Well, I mean, we all saw this coming. Already there.
Warwick. So I mentioned my first playthrough, at the very start, I took everybody at absolute face value because given how everyone had been acting across the entire game up until then, there were certain expectations about how characters will act and how they will continue to act. And my first thought was, Warwick's a bro. He's our bro. He wants to help us out and I'm eager to bring him back. But as the chapter went on, I found myself coming up to this castle thinking about who the spy could be, and I realized this chapter isn't nearly as cut and dry. Even though Warwick's been our bro, it could easily be a Warwick. And I feel really bad, because I almost feel like I spoiled that it was Warwick by just taking note of some things here and there, but my first playthrough, I didn't really suspect him until here, until he revealed himself, at which point I said, no, that makes sense. But I didn't outright suspect him. But this playthrough, going in with the knowledge that he was beforehand, there were so many clues. Traitor indeed, we finally found him! No, I'm pretty sure you're, you're sure you were building. <laughs> and now he's no longer even human. you've thrown away your humanity, then we don't have any reason to hold ourselves back. We'll cut you down like everyone else here! It's not a difficult fight. We handle it well, you just have to run around and keep everybody buffed. Even this guy way back here. Just about everybody. A couple of stragglers, the mages. I don't know why these monsters, especially when they include Warwick, I don't know why they thought they could take us after they've seen what we're capable of. Kill the wretch. Well, I mean, yeah, what do you think the Day of Destruction is? Malaroth comes back, kills everything.
Good riddance. Yet live, eh? I can put a stop to that. What's funny is we didn't even bring anything to this fight that's unusual. We didn't have Malroth, we didn't have my inventions, nothing. All we've got are a bunch of soldiers that have just been chilling for quite some time. And me holding a standard that they gave me. Yeah, so, about that, um, so I've, I mentioned that there were a lot, a surprising number of tells that Warwick was the spy, and some of that was that he didn't come with us to go get two of the, to go get the other items, the other two orbs, or not the other orbs, to investigate the... Opposing armies. Or at least I don't think he did. But he did come with us to investigate the last one. The machines that were weak to cold. And it coincidentally happened to be that one where, for one, we didn't sneak into their army. We didn't find that anything about out about them from them. Instead, we went to a completely separate place where the key to their weakness was just right there with a couple monsters, nothing fancy, nothing they don't expect us to be able to take out. They also had the mirror right there where Warwick said, I'm going out this time in hopes of finding some actual evidence and Conveniently, we found that evidence. It's almost as if that entire event was set up. Little words here and there. And then here, where Anessa was the one who said, you're really going to take your the entire army and leave the castle undefended? And Warwick jumped to knock her down and say, yo, you're the one who's being problems. This is something we've got to do. We have to leave that castle completely undefended. Man, what a weenie. Yeah, there's a lot of talk about illusions, and while for sure the castle and the people within are one, I'm starting to think that may mean a little bit more than we thought. We don't got time to think about that, though. Ah, oh, convenient. Well, yeah, that means they got an army going straight for the castle, so we gotta get the heck there! And we are gone! Oh, we can't even teleport directly there. This is all the closer we can... it'll take us. Well, there was a ragtag couple of defenders there, and maybe that, in conjunction with our actual defenses, can hold them off. Oh boy, dragons. Ah, 
Onwards! Are they actually moving or are they just frozen? Oh, they're moving! Shut up! King made it behind me somehow. Okay, I got in, I ticked them off. They know what's up, they know who's fighting what, and I'm gonna buff the heck out of them while we're waiting. Oh no, there's somebody fighting inside too. Okay, well that dragon is just about gone. Is that the big dragon inside? Oh, I guess they're all the way over here too. Good thing I built this! They're attacking from the north! Oh, that guy's inside. Oh jeez, just blew the heck right up through our wall! Are these our only foes left? I think we took care of the one or two from the front. Yeah, just taking a quick look. I think we're all right from this side. Man, I'm glad I built this wall. We got one left somewhere. Where is he? Is he friggin' up top? Holy crap! Get him, get him, get him! Y'all better fix this. You know how much effort I put into building this piece of crap? Kill him! You're not gonna fix this! No, you're gonna fix the part that the friggin' front! I'm gonna be so angry if they don't fix that wall. All success. Well, it turns out Dear Warwick isn't so dear anymore. Please rebuild my wall. Not just yours, please. 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 Hold up. Was it? Oh, it was, thank heavens. <laughs> and that's the thing with Warwick. You saw how terrified he was of death. Absolutely terrified. And they said because, like, he lost everyone. So, of course, he felt like he was coming for him, too. His time can't be far behind. Especially in a, a place of constant war. Feels like there was more to it than that, though. He said it didn't even matter who won this war. Friggin' Warwick knew this.
So this whole time, Anessa has absolutely been pro-builder, pro-end of war. Which, I suppose, makes sense. She came up with a lot of, let's say, flimsy excuses. When everything we did to take out the enemy, she was pro for. She was ready to do everything, every step of the way. And she would just say, oh yeah, for the continuation of the war, right? When... Doesn't matter what we did. She was cool with it. Warwick called it, though. Right before he passed, he was like, Dang it, Anessa, I friggin' knew that you were always on their side. Admittedly, um... On one hand, this felt a little... Contrived to me, the very first time. Like, you've been thinking of Anessa as kind of the villain, almost, all this time. And then right now, very suddenly... You're supposed to say, no, actually, she's your best friend. She's what Warwick was trying to trick you into believing he was. And it feels a little... I don't know, you have to have that emotional bond built up. You can't just be told that and then be good. But, admittedly, I feel like... One text box less would have drastically affected how I felt about this whole thing. And that was the second text box that Jeremiah said. Where he came up and said, Anessa, isn't it about time you told them? If he had just shut up and let Anessa explain it as she did, I think it would have been cool. But it was that he came up and said... Like, isn't true you tell them? And then, very quickly, isn't it true that you've always been our best friend? And been pro-building? And pro-anti-Hargon? And everything that's cool? Like, just that real quick one text box of, like, let her reveal it. Or let her reveal it under her terms. With her reasoning. And I feel like that would have settled with me and meant so much more to me. Um, should we be doing this with everybody still here? So, the king mentioned before that he knew the truth of the world, or at least had suspicions, but... I'm guessing that it did take him... He wasn't sure. He wasn't positive. Should I put this banner away? You want the army up here? So we've heard also heard this, or at least bits of this, from Malaroth's side. And what we get is that this world is not the real world. This world was created for an express purpose, and that purpose was aiding Malaroth's revival. We came from the real world. We were brought here from the real world. That's when the ship wrecked. And a few people came with us. 
not everyone here is specifically part of this world. A number of people came from the real world. We did. Um, Lily did. Monster Mom on Skeletraz. She came from the outside world. And that's why the outside world is the one that has the true history, the true remembrances. What truly happened to Moonbrook, where Hargon was defeated and Moonbrook was rebuilt and lived happily. I feel like the king also came from the outside world. Perhaps the true king, the present king of Moonbrook. Who knows? Who knows when he was brought over? How long ago in our time did this illusion come to be? Princess of Moonbrook. If the end of Dragon Quest II is anything to say, then everything is fine. Ah! This is this is so this is so nice to see that he's even like sad and crying because he's happy. But yeah, Moonbrook Castle was trash. So this king must have been the king when it was trashed. Maybe even at the time he was brought into the illusion. That the illusion could have existed that long ago. Maybe Hargon had, as part of his plans at the time, maybe he had several worlds built up as alternate worlds that he could build upon. And the king was just brought to one of them. But Dragon Quest II is anything to say. Princess is fine. She went back to Moonbrook, rebuilt it, and is living happily. say the world is not the real world. That's all of it. Burrowfield, Crumbledon, all of it. That's what the Hammerhood was talking about. When he mentioned talking trees, he meant the Dia tree. And of course, of course the gold bar in Crumbledon. I wouldn't think about this world as being fake, as not being a real world. The people here are very real. They have very real hopes and dreams and wishes and lives. And so, whether or not this is part of the real world or not, part of the outside world or not, doesn't matter. Because this is still the real world. A real world. And regardless of what's going on outside, Atlas is still coming to take the very real lives of all these soldiers, all these citizens. So at the moment, we still have to stop him. I'll grab that iron in a minute. There's one last thing we have to do, and that's complete this blueprint. Don't know where they're going. 
I hate Tanessa. Probably something that we'll need to tell you eventually, but at the moment, let's leave it for later. That's not something we need to bog you down with now. And that's, that's one thing about, like, people say, well, the government shouldn't keep any information secret. They should be completely transparent and have all information out. And sometimes information, information needs to be held back. Sometimes revealing that information could endanger lives. Sometimes, in a situation like this, this is a big deal. This isn't something we can just tell everybody right now. If we tell everyone this, if we reveal this to them right before we fight Atlas, how well are they going to fight? It's information that needs to come out. People need to know. Timing is important. And now, sure not the right time. So let's build that cannon! I mean, it's nothing too much to look at, but it'll get the job done. It may look like part of it was missing, but we kind of built some of it already. I'm thinking about also tidied up the church a little bit. I just kind of put another layer of blocks around the top. You can kind of see it from here. Just made it look more uniform with everything else. All right, and we don't even have to go get the materials. Which, granted, there's not a lot, not compared to these last couple ones. But... All right. So while they get to work, I'll say, until next time, everyone, when we build a Kazapple cannon and show Atlas who's boss. I don't know how they're getting those blocks out there. <laughs> 